With your role, VP of Commercial, are you dealing? Are you talking to a lot of the clients then now, and that are wanting to harness this data? Yeah. So VP of Commercial, it it covers everything basically that's customer facing. Okay. Everything from everything from sales. Yeah. Implementation support. Right. Marketing, and uh, and customer success. So and this that customer success division that we have right now that's being that's that draw now so they're yes talking to the customers mm -hmm. finding out what their struggles are finding out what their goals are mm -hmm. so that we can assist them uh, to use our product and the goals um i think that's more of the systems that we provide whether it's fleet management system uh asset health our ready line or even the safety systems uh with with smart cap there used to be a tendency just to focus on the operations itself. Okay. And now it's being recognized that it, there must be an alignment okay. between the business model yeah. and the operations. Maybe unpack that just a little bit more, sure. even for my own understanding. So it, it, what's been that big difference that you've seen now mm. in that? Maybe if you could just unpack that. Sure. Well, it's it's... Instead of just going in, and if I could, if I can give a sort of a real world example, instead yep. of going in and just doing classroom training and what, yep. what button to push, mm -hmm. right, when you want to do something, it's going in and understanding, you know, what is it from a business side that where they are creating and protecting their value, right, okay. as, as a business. Okay. And then working with them, this is how you will then use our systems right. to meet your business goals. Okay. Rather than just the short-term objectives, you know, hour to hour, day by day. Okay. Um, an example of that um, on a more general scope, a larger scope would be a contractor versus an owner-operator mining. Okay. So a contractor has a different business model. Yeah. Right? They're being paid differently. Yeah. Right. They have different KPIs and different KPI and goals. Right. Than an owner-operator running the load and haul fleet may have. Right. But it's the same system. Mm -hmm. that they both use. So it's working with those two different entities, those two different uh, clients yeah, um, to understand how they can use the same system, but how they can use it to match their specific needs. That's actually an interesting point. And, and I know when we were talking like in the prep, we were, we were looking at a slide from Ernst and Young mm. and it, it, it talks about the top 10 risks and opportunities. Right. Is there when you looked at that, what what really stood out? I think you said there was kind of like like three areas that really stood out. There were, yeah. Thanks. There was uh, when looking at the Ernst and Young uh, top ten risks and opportunities. In the top five, three of them were ESG related. Okay. Right? Environmental, social, and governance related. Number one was ESG, just okay as the umbrella ESG. Yep. And then there was, I think there was capital, and then there was the license to operate. Right. Which is ESG as well. It's not that piece of paper they're getting. It's not the permit to go mine. Mm -hmm. The license to operate is their brand. It's their, uh, the community acceptance. You know, does the community trust them to come in and be a good neighbor? Yeah. Right. And then the other one in terms of ESG was climate change, of course. Mm -hmm. So... Now, even though our systems don't directly affect that, we do have the data. We do have the contextual data yep. right, to support that, report on the ESG, provide them the information that they need. And that actually, those three, even though it's indirectly to what Wenko provides, actually supports the previous trend you were asking me about, about long-term value. Right. Right, so this goes hand in hand with that. ESG is not a short-term gain. ESG no. is something that needs to be paid attention to over the long term. So that sort of dovetails nicely into that long-term value. Um, then you get down to point number five, I think it was in the in the top ten, which was digital and innovation, and of course, yes, yeah. exactly where we fit. And then yeah. number six, cost and productivity. Right. So and those almost those can almost like those can almost be combined because like with the digital side and the innovation that right. directly will affect that cost that productivity right. absolutely yeah and then when you and then when you break down that digital innovation even further they yep. talk about process intelligence and automation mm -hmm. um, that's where we're involved contextually again with the data mm -hmm. uh, the interoperability having the open systems. Right. Um, that we provide. And that's um, uh, to sort of feed into that. Then there's business and operations intelligence. 
sort of spoke to that earlier as well, but yep. that's right in our wheelhouse. ESG platform, decision-making, and ROCs, or the remote operating centers. So all of that is in the digital innovation uh, sort of category. And that's yeah, and right I, where we fit. 